Growing up in the digital age as you have, there aren't too many of you who haven't heard the word cyberbully, been cyberbullied, or known someone who has been cyberbullied. You could say it's an epidemic. Some stories where cyberbullying happened, things worked out. Some are too painful for kids to tell. Take Ryan's story, for example. Ryan had always played sports. Growing up, he was very familiar with bats, balls, uniforms, cleats, and other gear. Everything it took to be a member of a team. Ryan was academically gifted and naturally athletic. A standout when it came to stealing bases or passing a football. As Ryan got older, with parents and coaches guiding him, he began to narrow his focus to include just one or two sports. By the time he was in 8th grade, the focus had come down to baseball. With excellent sports training behind him, he easily made the team and was well on his way to making the high school baseball team the next fall. Nick grew up in the same school district boundaries as Ryan, but under very different circumstances. They knew each other, but never played together as young kids, and went very different directions in middle school. Nick was an introvert who, over time, became so isolated from peers and even family that people began to avoid him while others worried about him. Nick's grades were mediocre, and he was gawky and uncoordinated. His parents cared about him, but unfortunately, raising their son was not their priority. No one paid much attention to Nick or his activities at home or school. Circumstances at school, combined with Nick's background and low self-esteem, made Nick an easy target for bullies. Out of frustration and loneliness, Nick began to skip school to avoid the feelings of ridicule and shame brought on by inappropriate remarks made to him in person and on social media. And social media was by far the worst. Some of you watching this video can probably relate. Daily, students posted altered pictures of Nick making awkward faces, nasty comments, repeatedly targeting him with unwanted messages. Nick had no one to turn to. The more time he spent alone, the more anxious and depressed he became, until one day he realized suicidal thoughts were becoming an obsession. He began to research ways to end his life. Ryan was aware of what was happening to Nick, but even with all his popularity and confidence, for fear of being a snitch, felt powerless to do anything or tell anyone who might be able to intervene. One afternoon in his science class, Ryan noticed a post on a friend's Facebook page having to do with friends telling Nick to go kill himself. Ryan knew then and there he had to do something. Ryan told his parents and school counselor what was going on with Nick, how students were bullying him at school and cyberbullying him online. He showed them the comments on the Facebook page, and then Ryan did something totally unexpected and out of character. He reached out online and then went to Ryan's house to talk to him. Wow, that took guts and more than a little maturity. You know, at first, reluctant to let Ryan into his house, Nick scowled when he opened the door and asked if Ryan was there to ridicule him too. Ryan let Nick know that he knew what was going on at school and wanted to help. He took the next step by asking Nick how he would feel about coming with him to the field to play baseball and hang out and to work on a school project together. It took Nick some time to realize Ryan meant what he said. He wanted to help Nick and help others see that bullying and cyberbullying cause harm. It didn't take kids long to see that their behavior had been foolish and dangerous. Students who had been bullying Nick were disciplined. Those who had stood by and watched the bullying decided to start a technology leadership council that involved peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and support for, among other achievements, a cause that would become known as an anti-bullying campaign. Bullying is defined as willful and repeated harm. Statistics show us over 80% of teens use a cell phone regularly, making it the most popular form of technology and a common medium for cyberbullying. About half of all young people have experienced some form of cyberbullying, and one out of five kids experience it regularly. Sadly, not all cyberbullying incidents end well. Many end in some form of psychological, emotional, or physical stress. Some end in self-harm or suicide. When it comes to cyberbullying, you can choose to stand up to cyberbullying. Form a technology leadership council and be campus leaders.